another graph physics video presentation looks like it's recording microphone's a bit far away slide that in here okay sorry yeah lacking the production crap again but anyway you can stand a little bit of imperfection <laughs> a little bit uh, just an observation so this tea party guy who I am always trying to get to stay on the subject and um, uh, it doesn't matter what I say right because I can't make the rules I can't establish some sort of framework for people to talk in and use the same vocabulary and all that kind of stuff as much as I keep trying so there's this subject like philosophy there's this thing called philosophy and there's you can do it well or you can do it badly that is you can do it scientifically you know using your reasoning skills or you can just make shit up um, and you know most people are doing the other so it really is a science philosophy but it's a category of science because it mostly deals with what you might call valuetistics or something you know, I mean if you were to give it a physics kind of word or a chemistry kind of word it's really the uh, subject of value uh, you know and analyzing value um, and yeah, that's not the subject of this channel. Um, that's sort of the in Mintem channel that deals with those questions. Um, and you keep, you know, trying to make physics into a value conversation, and it's not a value conversation. Uh, it ha it has implications to understanding value. I mean, obviously, I think the more you understand about physics, the more you understand. God is a silly answer, um, but that's all I have to say about it. Um, the subject isn't God, or even origins of the universe. Physics doesn't even really do that. All right, just an observation of honesty. I understand your point of view more than you know. Well, you, presuming you know what I know. <laughs> In my opinion, your intelligence level does seem quite high. Well, again, don't you understand how Tea Party LA guy says so? It doesn't mean much. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, your opinion is, you know. <laughs> how can you judge? For you to judge, don't you have to be smarter than something? You know? But anyway, it doesn't matter. I think when you see the world as it is, it disgusts you. Yes, clearly I made that point. That's right. It's disgusting. Yes, cannibalism essentially is disgusting. Um, and that's, we're on a planet of the cannibals. In the sense that it's sentient feeling organism consuming sentient feeling organism. Not a good idea. Um, <clears throat> the animals are suffering, the children who are abused, the never-ending wars, as you can just go on and on, the diseases, the cancer, the horror, ooh, awful. Okay, uh, it's a very ugly, but the reality of it might be, might, of it might bother you more because you're really smart. Well, you don't have to be really smart, see, that's the whole point. Um, all you have to do is be a little bit honest, and, um not full of shit where you just make up some kind of oh and it ended happily ever after yeah <laughs> you know forever they lived happily ever after I mean that's how all the stories end right I mean you don't fall for that you don't fall for some bearded guy in the North Pole making little toys for kids and he's not trying to molest them or anything he's not out for anything nothing has to be in it for him <laughs> you know and he gets to live forever and have magical reindeer and a, no, you don't fall for that shit. You don't have to be really smart not to fall for that. Come on. I agree with you. Well, you don't really, but you keep f insisting that there's some silver lining somewhere almost. You keep looking for it. Um, and that's not really the job of the physicist. That's the job of some other... <laughs> something other. Yes. Um, I don't know why it has to be this way. Well, that's sort of the answer physics will give you. Is The answer is, is because the universe doesn't have a brain. And uh, the thing that made the thing didn't have a brain. And there's no brain involved, so there's no capacity to know any of that value stuff. Valuetistics was not invented. 
uh, when the universe was doing its thing and therefore it wasn't composed to be reasonable or rational or smart. It's just a pile of shit. And we're swimming in it. Uh, yes, the world is so disgusting. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. Well, you can recognize it and not be an asshole, right? I mean, Tea Party LA, you're basically just saying, dumbass, okay, uh, who falls for all the bullshit and uh, thinks, uh, you know, uh, social justice is enough, uh, a somewhat kind of obscenity. Uh, don't bother me with that. <laughs> you know, I got mine, fuck you. That's the Tea Party asshole. <sighs> anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you could do better than you're doing. You could change your fucking screen name. <sighs> For fuck's sake. Anyway. Uh, I might be less than intelligent. Well, I, like I said, I can only go by the little pieces I get. And, uh, you know. Uh, but if I could, I would stop it all. Well, good. So it's good you recognize it. It's good you understand it. So that's fine. If I've accomplished that task, giving you some kind of reason not to you know, be persuaded to, to fall into the realm of let's just make up bullshit and make this all seem like it's a re reasonable game, then fine, um, good. Um, but it's not the subject of the channel, that's all. Alright. So, that's all I can say. Anyway. So anyway, I've sort of related, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I found this physicist interesting, not only because she's a chick, uh, you know, which is cool, uh, and, you know, she's very articulate, uh, seems to arrange ideas and notions in a decent order, um, but this video is just terrible. <laughs> so, you know, I figure I'll have to play it and just rag on it because it's just plain awful. Uh, and, um, you know, it just they're, they're just not getting anything you know, in terms of the, the, the agenda here and recognizing that their physics is fundamentally crap, all right? <laughs> and that's just, you know, obvious. It's obvious in not only the shape of it, it's just ugly as hell. Um, bent space, virtual photon, these are really ugly scientific answers. Um, but all this stuff, they just have no idea how it even works. Um, you know, they have some clue of what it does, but no clue of how it does it. And that's just oh, overtly obvious. They can't even, you know, wave particle. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, they're just dark matter, uh, invisible energy, uh, you know, all this crap. I mean, it's just such crap. And in, in the atmosphere, again, where they have so few real, um, drawable, okay, ideas of concepts of what something's actually doing, how it's actually going from point A to point B, and in what form, and all of that stuff. They're clueless. And that should be the, you know, this idea of a theoretical physicist. They're, should, they're the ones who are supposed to point out what's theoretically impossible, like gravitational lensing. The theory's nutty because the evidence isn't there in the sense that if you even if you concede the silly images again theoretically impossible um, they don't fit any kind of structure uh, you can't make big thick Einstein rings now it doesn't mathematically work unless you make dark lenses of some kind <laughs> unless you just make up some kind of invisible structure um, some made-up crap that you're just saying is there that just for the purpose of making it theoretically possible and that's all you seem to be doing with your theoretical physicist is just making a new crap up um, inventing some kind of new bullshit thing uh, that isn't really what you're saying it is you make up words like annihilation and and uh, you don't really mean annihilate <laughs> you know I mean it just it's so bad, um, and then, you know, they're not even getting into the silly entanglement nonsense. Um, and you draw these hard conclusions based on mushy evidence. Again, what's the theory in that? There's no rational theory to drawing hard conclusions on mushy evidence. That's bad theory. That's bad science. 
Uh, so you're not catching any of the right fish. You're, you're really bad at it, I guess I have to say. Um, because really that's your job. Your job is to analyze the theory and say, does this make any sense? Does it have continuity? Does it uh, you know, fit? <laughs> and it doesn't. The, the, the fact that the pieces don't fit is in your face. Wave particle duality. You could just say that over and over again. You could just say this um, fields. Fields of what? Uh, you know, bent space field, uh, magnetic field, electric field. There's no evidence of these fields. Come on. So bad. So anyway, play along. So again, I just uh, I did request interview privileges, but haven't heard anything back. So who knows? This week I'm on vacation and. So that probably means she was on vacation before this week. <laughs> okay, so and this video is just thrown in while she's on vacation. So she's actually on vacation while she's making the video kind of thing. Um, so yeah, maybe she's not taking emails right now. I don't know. So I want to answer a question that I get a lot, but that doesn't really fit into the usual program. So that's theoretically a little bit of a disconnect right there, right? Like, why is when you go on vacation, you change the subject? Like, somehow we're on vacation. Now, if you said, oh, it's the holiday season and everybody's a little bit fucked up, so I'll just make a shit video because it's the fucked up season. You know, there's not as many viewers, blah, 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 blah. People are busy, so I'll just make a garbage, I mean, a, you know, less, a less real video, less scientific video, uh, whatever, different kind of video. Well, that might make sense. But going on vacation means you can make a crap video, <laughs> you know, especially when you made it ahead of time. Nah, that doesn't theoretically make any sense. What does a theoretical physicist do? Uh, talk shit. That would be my first impression. My first answer would be just talk shit. Just make some bullshit up. Oh, many universes and blah, 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 blah. Take a, a problem and you really can't dissect it very well, so you just say jellyfish. You just call everything that's, um, you know, doesn't have legs, <laughs> you call it a jellyfish because it's easy. That's it. Do you sit around all day and dream up new particles or fantasize about the beginning of the universe? Yeah, well, you seem to do that all the time. I mean, you seem completely, they do seem completely obsessed with these, uh, making these bold assertions about the instant instant of the first creation the first explosion all this other kind of crap stuff that is so distant from where you have real evidence I mean you ha certainly have a lot less hope and and this is in the context of where you have no clue what a photon is I mean what have you done since since Einstein said you know I spent 50 years studying photons and haven't improved my understanding one iota since that point what have you done to improve your understanding? I mean, what exactly <laughs> has, has changed in terms of your understanding? You seem just as full of shit on the subject as you were in 1956 or whenever Einstein died. How does it work? Research in theoretical physics generally does one of two things. Yes, well, the research into phys to theoretical physics doesn't even make sense as a kind of a concept. I mean, uh, you're, it's clearly not going to be something that's marketable, uh, and if you force it to be, then it's, I'm sorry, it's really not theoretical physics anymore. Um, it's supposed to be fixing the subject of physics, you know, the whole subject. It's supposed to not be in some kind of niche of, what's in it for us, you know, as quantum bullshitters or some other subcategory, um, some institute that making a living somehow uh, you know, that's really not good theory. So again, it's, you know, you're sort of breaking the concept by forcing it to exist in some kind of capitalist structure. Uh, that's already a huge fail. It's the thing that people should be doing in the institutions of education um, for the purpose of finding a truth, not finding a way to make some money. Either we have some data that require explanation for which a theory must be developed, or... So, this is against this 
bitterizing things and saying that everything's this uh, crap. Uh, you know, look at the, look at all these little triangles here. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it's all the same symbol times the same symbol times the same symbol uh, plus the same symbol minus the same symbol. Um, anyway, um, no, it's the concept thing. There's a difference between you know having a mechanism, you know, and and identifying it. So if something moves really, really fast, you know, and it just goes really fast, like hummingbirds or something, maybe that nobody could draw one very well because, you know, nobody saw one sitting down for a while and all that stuff. So you had a theory of hummingbird and you did the best you could and you found the things it can't be and you did all that kind of stuff. You didn't worry about, well, I have a stopwatch and I've timed it and I know exactly how fast it flies. I mean, yeah, that's okay to know. But that really doesn't have to do with anything to do with the guy trying to do the theory of hummingbird, you know. So I just don't think you understand the word theoretical. Well, we have a theory that requires improvement, and the improved theory leads to a prediction, which is then experimentally tested. Right, so it doesn't really have anything to do with the theoretical physics, uh, you know. Just, you're not, you know. Uh, I mean, it's the kind of obvious thing that a scientist does is uh, tries to pick out ways to see more data. And that's another thing that's just gigantically missing in physics is the idea of doing the experiment um, rigorously, uh, as they did in the old days, over and over again, all kinds of different ways. I mean, Faraday did so many different experiments um, trying to pull out of the experiment some nuance uh, that would some change, some difference, some effect that would make a difference to find out what it is. You know, put obstacles in front of it, do different things to see what, what the hell is it really doing? How is it doing it? And physics doesn't do that. It just does this <clears throat> vague, oh yeah, well, we did these detector experiments on the photon, we did this and we did that, and you know, they never did any of the experiments, and uh, they barely even look to find out what changes, how, what subtle changes can I make and what does it do to the outcome of the experiment. Um, and there's just nothing like that. Instead, you know, you have to go searching for an experiment like Stern Gerlach. There's not a single video of somebody doing the experiment. Um, and then you'll never find one where there's anything called an electron by itself in the experiment and yet they draw all kinds of conclusions about what electrons are doing even though they're analyzing atoms. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense at all. I have noticed that some people think theoretical physics is something special to the foundations of physics. It's supposed to be. I guess that would be the argument, is that, yes, that's theoretically what it's supposed to be, is you're starting with the, the model idea. So I guess, I don't know if you can make analogies, but this, this happens in everything, right? You can say somebody's an artist, but, you know, are they good at making concepts, I mean, that is, it's pretty, you know, so they're an artist because they make beautiful things. Are they an artist because they have these very highly practiced technical skills? So you can almost argue in music, there's people who are, you know, incredibly well practiced at playing instruments, uh, you know, but they can't write any music. You know, and then there's composers who might suck at playing an instrument, but they're just brilliant at arranging music, you know, the notes. So it's really not the same thing. Um, so yes, I would say you've misunderstood your own subject in the sense that theoretical physics should be about continuity in the model. They should be looking for the places where there's no continuity and fixing them. Where the theory is broken, where the fundamental theory, the standard model for example, has gaping, gigantic, you know, <laughs> sorry, it's silly, uh, bits to it. Oh, let's make up a whole bunch of particles, but we don't have any role for them to play in regular nuclear physics. That is, they don't do anything unless we pull them out of the, an atom and in an accelerator. Well, then they exist, but in an atom, we don't have any role for them to play. They're not doing anything. <laughs> They're not keeping anything working. But that isn't so. All subdisciplines of physics have an experimental part and a theoretical part. Well, says you. I mean, I just don't think that would make any sense. Uh, frankly, 
experiment is a source of information and creativity is also in the sense of putting facts together and creating new facts. So you can gain new facts by running an experiment and manipulating it. That's a great way to do it. Um, make detectors and actually use them. <laughs> you actually prove your statements. Um, that's great. You know, take an interferometer, for example, and play with it in all kinds of different ways and see what you can pull out of it. Um, do different kinds of uh, experiments, fiddle with your lasers. Everybody does that. You know, it makes sense. Um, see if you can improve your results. Um, so that's one way to, to glean some understanding of how it works. Uh, but the other way of doing it is to take the facts from experiments and from <clears throat> different things like gravity and magnetism and they have this connection, the stuff moves the speed of light and then magnetism and electricity, well what the fuck would be an electric field anyway, that's really the charge field and if I put two charges together, haven't I created a magnet, I mean, it, you know, blah 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 blah, I mean, combining what you understand and putting it together and creating new facts, new understanding, new theory. That's what you're doing. You're making theory out of the existing theory. How much the labor is divided into different groups of people depends strongly on the field. In some parts of astrophysics, for example, data collection, analysis and theory development is done by pretty much the same people. That's also the case in some parts of condensed matter physics. <laughs> yes, because it's all mush. It's all made up and uh, therefore there's no consequence to getting it wrong because all you do is make, if, if one part of your made up theory changes, you just change the other part of the made up stuff. So you can draw these pictures any way you want. <laughs> it's okay, because they're all just made up pictures. In these areas, many experimentalists are also theorists. But if you look at fields like cosmology or high energy particle physics, people well, there's see, I guess that's another part of this whole thing that's sort of broken is they think physics is these different subjects when you know it's all physics. I mean, it might be you could maybe argue the same thing happened with um, physics being separated from chemistry and then being separated from biology and so forth. Um, there's one universe, would be my argument. Uh, obviously it's a small universe. I think that's another obvious point to make. Um, the small universe makes the big universe. The universe, big universe doesn't make the small universe. Um, so physics really should be one subject, not this idea that there's a big universe to explain and then there's a little universe to explain because the little universe made the big universe and just that's the way it does work. People tend to specialize either in experiment or in theory development. Theoretical physics is pretty much a job like any other in that you get... So that's kind of a silly statement um, because it's uh, there's a lot of ambiguity about what you're actually producing uh, first in the organization that would pay somebody to do theoretical physics they're usually going to uh, require them to do something very specific like find a theory you know, that makes this chalk right under water or something. Find a, a way to make that happen. Or, <clears throat> you know, some other concept like that. I mean, uh, um, or else they're trying to make money off publishing or, you know, some other... But it's, it's a very strange kind of business to be in, uh, you know, in terms of how it's financed. And usually it's financed by government money or some other institution that's supposed to be caring about getting to some kind of truth when all they're really getting to is you know we want something we can sell to the public we get some Nobel Prize bullshit out of it to get some blah 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 uh, hype uh, you know and it really doesn't have anything to do with um, you know uh, being true to the word um, theoretical in terms of recognizing that the first, your first job is to find out what's theoretical nonsense and um, claiming you can measure half the distance of a proton, that's pretty much theoretical nonsense and should be outed for what it is, theoretical nonsense. An education and then you put your knowledge to work. You find theoretical physicists in public higher education institutions, which is probably what you are most familiar with, but you also 
Yes, well, that's, like I stated, I think that's probably their only legitimate role, um, frankly. Uh, you know, I mean, as soon as you commercialize it, then it is really just about selling some bullshit to somebody. Um, pretty much. Uh, not that I, you know, I certainly I, you can imagine that somebody could actually invest in the idea that somebody is going to theoretically understand physics better, um, fix the model, and therefore produce some innovation that will have value, like free energy or whatever. So there could be some hope of a repairs to physics that would uh, lead to some um, economic gain for the individuals who found the repair. Also find them in the industry and in non-profit research institutions like the one I work at. So again, a non-profit research institution. <laughs> you got to wonder what the hell that is. But again, it still is, you know, it can only sell itself if it does something that somebody can recognize or sell as being an accomplishment. Um, so, and what is defined as accomplishment nowadays is woo. You know, give me some more woo. Give me some magic. Sell me some story that the universe is fancier. Uh, you know, it's glitter, it's unicorns. Just what the job entails depends on the employer. Besides the research, a theoretical physicist may have administrational duties or may teach, mentor students, do public outreach, organize scientific meetings, sit on committees, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so again, all kind of crap. I mean, you could say that if they actually did this, uh, um, where she said it, but there's no committees. I mean, but the idea of having seminars or going and um, whatever you want to call that in some way, um, comparing notes, uh, arguing even, uh, they seem to avoid a lot of that. And that seems to be the thing that's missing is any kind of checks and balances. There's no balance to how wacky the theories can get, no balance to, uh, you know, having to. Uh, ground any of this in really hard evidence or analyzed evidence. Again, the claims can just be made. LIGO can say, we've done it. And, well, yes, you did squeal a little bit and say, well, <laughs> you really didn't prove that you did it. I mean, at least you were honest enough to say it's not a very good proof. Uh, it's pretty thin evidence that you actually have done it. Um, but, you know, obviously you didn't slow them down any. Uh, so, the the process of of correction is broken uh, because there is no scrutiny. Fourth, when it comes to the research itself, theoretical physics doesn't work any different from other disciplines of science. I think it does. Um, first off, the results aren't measured by any, they don't have to produce anything of value. Um, and usually in the real world, value is uh, a pretty straight line. You know, it's uh, either make the water more drinkable or you don't. You either do something within the economic requirements or you don't. You either find a process that filters water uh, economically or you don't. So it's measured by a I mean, success-failure thing where theoretical phys physics is ambiguous about what's successful and what's a failure. All you're really doing is selling a story. Um, and it's, you know, whether it's sellable or not, doesn't have anything to do with the integrity of the story. It doesn't have to be a true story. It just has to be a sellable story. The largest part of research, 99%, is learning what other people have done. This means you read books and papers, go to seminars, attend conferences, listen to lectures, and you talk to people until you understand what they have done. Well, so again, I don't think any of that's necessary because all you have to do is look at what's already stated as facts and say, this can't be quite right. Um, Wave-particle duality, again. Uh, you can look at, again, Maxwell's equations and you can see the bisection of the speed of light using these two archaic constants that are basically replacements for the speed of light. So you've just bisected a, a physical concept that obviously doesn't it shouldn't be bisected. You wouldn't have to bisect the speed of light if you were actually doing the equations right. So that obviously can be tightened up by recognizing you're only talking about one field. 
a field that causes repulsion and a field that causes attraction. That's it. You know, that's the only concept that exists in magnetism, electricity, charge. All of those things have that concept. And not even to recognize that. That that's fixable. Wave particles, fixable. These are all the fixable things sitting right there in front of you. The, the, the insane um, um, argument that somehow there's a bent geodesic and a virtual photon. And that somehow these two things are playing the same role in their different universes. The big universe has this bent space stuff. The little universe has this virtual photon. I mean, an obvious problem. That's what you should be fixing. And as you do that, you probably come across some open problems. And from those, you pick one for your own research. Yeah, so you can spend a long time trying to find a proof, you know, trying to prove that, no, it's not many universes. But isn't that a waste of time trying to create a proof that many universes can't be the right answer. I mean, that should be the wrong answer right from the beginning just because, well, there's absolutely no evidence and you can just make up anything you want. Uh, you know, wormholes, going all the way back to the infinite gravity well, well, how do you have this perception that you can have an infinite amount of force or an infinite amount of pressure? Where did you get that notion from? The universe doesn't appear to work that way. You would pick a problem that, well, you're interested in, but also something that you think will move the field forward. And importantly, you pick a problem that you think you have a reasonable chance of solving. Right, that's what I did. So I, I guess I'm arguing that even though I didn't bother with all that college education stuff and everything, I did theoretical physics better because, yes, I, I took the obvious problems and said, yes, let's fix those. They're right here in front of you, glaringly looking at you, saying, hello, I'm a big fat problem. Um, this whole notion of this photon that's perturbating in fields that somehow can't be disturbed in any way, but, oh, yet the photon is bent by this gravity crap. <laughs> the, the thing that doesn't have any polarity is somehow affecting the thing that's supposed to be intensely polarized in terms of its existence in two separate fields, blah, 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 blah. I mean, this stuff doesn't make any sense, and you should fix it. With what you know. Picking a research topic that is both interesting and feasible is not easy. Uh well, I'm saying that they're all over the place. I mean, every single bit of physics has got, uh, in, obviously needs refinement. It seems at best fetal, okay? And I would say, yes, it's not even, it's plastic. It's not even, it's not even, I guess, you know, it doesn't have a hope to evolve into anything. Um, I mean, they're, it's fundamentally flawed. It's got huge, obvious um, problems. And you just keep pretending with this hype that, no, it's all this, it's the most proven math in the history of mankind. It's, uh, you know, everything's fine. Everything works great. When you're defining that working great by such a pitiful standard of barely rolling. I mean, it's barely rolls. So, yes, you're able to make cupcakes with your theory. But it does it the hard way. And requires quite some familiarity with the literature. This is why younger researchers usually rely on more senior colleagues to pick a topic. What Which is a scary concept. You could put your hands and your, your fate in some other idiot's judgment. <laughs> Ooh, dangerous. Yes, but then you all become sycophants too. Yes, he was a, uh, you know, an apprentice too. So you just become owned by who you did your apprentices uh, by and, and, you know, you all become fellows of your icons. Uh, theoretical physics is special, is in the amount of mathematics that we use in our research. This is the part which is just kind of disgusting. Exactly, you use way too much. You, the mathematics is a bunch of generalities, a bunch of, you know, delta j, delta i, whatever the ups, you know, times a half, <laughs> you know, whatever that is. Um, I mean, it, jargon, 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 for all you're really saying is there's a relationship between certain real variables. Now, all those symbols aren't real variables, they're formulas in themselves. Um, <clears throat> 
And so that's the secret of their little secret code is understanding that that R isn't really just R and the G isn't a G and you know, it stands for something else. But eventually you get to real variables and then you understand there's relationships between things. Now what they did and you know, they, they thought it was rational theory to accept some notion that um, the nature of something's in, in momentum or power in the world is fundamentally related to its frequency. You know, when, no, you could argue that the bullets, you know, the, the quanta is always the thing that matters. And clearly, you can shoot more bullets in a certain amount of time. But what did they do? They took the concept of frequency and said it always relates to momentum. Just like Einstein tried to make everything the same and say a spaceship moving in space is the same as gravity and so therefore I'm going to bend photons. Um, there's no reason to do any of that and to force something to be what it's not. Force a, a car going down the street to have a frequency when it doesn't have one. It has momentum. So the, you know, the, the concept gets broken by all this mathematics because they find in one circumstance there's a relationship between two things then they decide they can take that relationship and move it into any formula and say any time I have water it's ice so I can use it as ice even when it's not ice essentially and it's such a cheat and the fact is is their answers are so ambiguous um, that it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong they wouldn't know the difference because they're generalities, they don't have to be very close. They're just all, they're just assuming things that are just obvious to anybody. That the car is going to hit a brick wall and a certain amount of energy is going to be released. Well that can be calculated even if you're using a wrong equation within some certain boundaries. And we know that a ton of energy can, you know, right now exist in the universe that they're not accounting for. Gravity, for example. Um, <clears throat> And so as long as they stay away from equations like, well, why is the center of the Earth molten? As long as they stay away from those tricky bits, um, <laughs> you know, then they can play with their little equations and say they understand gravity when they really don't. In physics, all theories are mathematical. This means both that you must know how to model... A so that's just crazy. I mean, it's just a crazy statement. In physics, all theories are mathematical. Um, figuring out whether something is actually bullets fired at a frequency out of alignment and whether it's some wave in some kind of field of whatever magnetic corn and you know electrical wheat uh, is waving okay <laughs> I mean those are huge conceptual differences I mean it is concepts at its core um, you can you can reduce a hummingbird to a bunch of mathematical equations, but it's best understood as a concept as oh first obviously the biological parts important because that's how it's gaining the energy to move the wings uh, You know, so there's lots of those mechanisms and you have to understand that conceptually You can't just turn it into mathematics and say oh, yeah, I understand hummingbird. I mean bullshit Natural system with mathematics and you must know how to do calculations within that model. Of yes, you must understand how to do all of these convoluted uh, tricks of manipulating variables um, to get outcomes. And a lot of them are good tricks. I mean, uh, invert and multiply, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, lots of little mathematical tricks are perfectly rational take your little x and you know flip it off put it on the numerator on the other side of the equation this kind of yes tricks are really good but your tricks have become your entire subject now is tricks and the tricks aren't tested by anything um, rigorous uh, there's, no, <laughs> there's no reality that you have to conform to which seems obvious that you can you can make up all these different stories, Copenhagen, many worlds, whatever the other one is, and they all somehow work, okay, in the framework of your mathematics, but they all can't be the right answer. Of course, we now do a lot of calculations numerically on a computer, 
but you still have to understand the mathematics that goes into this. There is really no way around it. Yeah, there is, um, frankly. Uh, you know, uh, there's no, you don't need math unless you're actually going to, like you're an architect, right? You can draw a building and you can get it all within, you know, understanding that, uh, yeah, I can't make it out of uh, balsa wood. I got to make it out of steel. You can understand, generally speaking, the tolerances and make a perfectly good drawing. Um, or else you could say, okay, I got to do this by some kind of economic standard, so I got to make sure I can do this within those boundaries. And so then you have to get technical. And we see how that that leads to disaster sometimes because they're right on the edge of the, all these technical standards. Um, but they mixed oil and water as they did it. You know, they mixed the corrosive with something, blah blah blah, and the whole thing is not going to be what they think it is in the end. Uh, the metal's going to rust, or some other thing's going to happen, and the theory goes to hell. Um, it's going to get too hot one day, and the whole building will melt. Uh, you know, some kind of bullshit's going to happen. But yeah, math is important if what your if that's your objective is um, within kind of some sort of you need to know the exact answer. But that's it. It's only for knowing exact answers. It's not understanding concept, concept of steel ball hitting steel ball versus steel ball hitting ball of putty. You don't need mathematics to understand what's going to happen. So that's the heart of the job. You have to find, understand, and use the right mathematics to describe nature. So again, and that all depends on you having some sort of formulations that are strong enough to withstand the places you're putting them so I would argue that I would argue that Maxwell's equations are incomplete the using using of these archaic uh, made-up constants um, you know that are derivatives of this of speed of light is just evidence of that you, know, you, you don't bisect the speed of light for no good reason I mean you'd have to have a really good reason to do that and there is no good reason except the fact that you're you're really talking about one force <laughs> and you're just playing a game of hiding one of the elements and you know if you make this element 100 percent then there's zero percent of the other element and so you're just creating a uh you know you can analyze that mathematics and f see the flaws in it and yet you've accepted it as um perfect you know as complete when it's not complete the thing that a lot of people don't understand is just how constraining mathematics is in theory development. Exactly. So once you make a mistake, it's critical. It's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be owned by it. As you go further and further down the road, the mistake's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. Just like LIGO bouncing their light beam between the mirrors, sixteen hundred times. Any error going into that sixteen hundred. Um, <laughs> uh, reflection adventure is just going to get amplified and amplified and amplified and amplified. You cannot just dream up a particle because of yes, you can. I mean, it's quite obvious. That's all you can. You can do it all the time. It's it's easy. You just claim that some piece of energy is a particle when it's not. Uh, and such. Yeah, right, it should be back. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, continuing. Almost everything that you can think of will not work if you write down the mathematics. It's either just nonsense, or you find quickly that it is in conflict with observation already. But... Uh, yeah, and how do you do that? It's by understanding it conceptually is the easiest way to understand that something must be wrong. And then when you, like I say, when you say things like wave-particle duality, you got to know that doesn't make any sense, that that's a shortcut, a cheap, a, a, a crooked line that you've thrown in here. Um, and again, just this whole idea of this ambiguity about being able to distinguish between these fantasy concepts. Uh, it looks like a bunch of, um, you know, um, Protestants arguing with a bunch of Methodists or something. Uh, your argument should be over the existence of your silly god, not whether your silly god is wearing a particularly silly hat. The job of a theoretical physicist is not done with finishing a calculation. 
Once you have your result, you have to write them up and publish them, and then you will give lectures about it. So that right, and the, and the what you publish can be absolute crap, like in the Bohr-Einstein argument. You know, Bohr published something that was just crap, a jargon. Everybody said yes because they liked Bohr more than they liked Einstein by that time, and. Um, Nobody can read the thing. Nobody can even understand what the fuck the paper says. But pff, it got published and it got embraced, even though they could republish it in, with the pages in the wrong order, and nobody even figured out they were in the wrong order. I mean, it's that bad. So to say you get published, you get published because you're saying something so convoluted that nobody wants to waste their time trying to figure out why this might be bullshit. <laughs> you know, and so, yes, a lot of these published papers just die, you know, in obscurity because, yeah, they don't have any relevance to anything. They don't mean anything. Uh, but, yeah, somebody got paid and they can write down on their little resume, I published so many papers, even though they're all horseshit. That other people can understand what you have done and hopefully build on your work. Yes, well, it's building on work. What people end up building on, frankly, is the innovations created by the people doing the work. So I would argue that the innovations that happen in uh, that happen on the assembly line happen be not because some engineer in an office building somewhere figures out how to do it better. It's the guy putting it together who says this is stupid. <laughs> you know, let's quit doing it this stupid way. Let me put the thing on, the fender on first, and then have this other asshole do this other thing, because why should I take his screws out to put my screws in, or something like that. Some obvious defect, okay, in the efficiency. And there's these people engineer better ways to do it. You know, they figure out, yeah, if I tweak this thing or I put a filter on, it works better, blah, blah, blah. But that's where most of it's coming from. It's not coming from this theoretical horse shit. What's fascinating about theoretical physics is just how remarkably well mathematics describes nature. So that's just terrible statement, just just terrible. Um, in terms of what goes up comes down, sure, okay, yes, math works. Um, most of the math, okay, that's governing the, simple, the stuff they discovered 300 years ago is still the good math. Okay, <laughs> the rest of it, you haven't added much value, could be argued. Um, and again, it, you know, the, the grounding math is Maxwell's equations, and then you just take all these perversions of it, um, derivatives of it, uh, um, and you tweak them all to the specific circumstance. So it's not like you have some kind of generic math that fits any circumstance. No, you model the math to the specific subject. You figure out that you have to add a variable because there's something going on that requires you to do that. Um, so it's just more mush. It's a formula. It's a recipe. And all you're doing is sitting there in the factory making your stupid cake, whatever you're doing in your gigantic bowl, and you're saying, you know, if we add a little bit of vinegar... You know, that reacts with the blah, 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 and causes a blah, blah, blah reaction. And, yeah, you don't taste it, but it ends up, uh, you know, making the cake have a much spongier texture. Some kind of bullshit like that. And that's all you're doing. I mean, that's all the real science is doing. And your theoretical assholes really aren't making much of a contribution. Sorry. No, no offense. Uh, because you're not doing it right. I mean, if you were theoretically attacking... <laughs> the silly standard model and the silly all the silly notions that are built in here and if you were applying the same kind of scrutiny to some of it uh, that you you should be applying to all of it you should be going you shouldn't just be uh, recognizing that <clears throat> well LIGO is making some extraordinary claims or the you know the Hadron Collider is making some extraordinary claims that they really haven't backed up with hard evidence um, you know, yeah, it's easy to pick on that. Well, why don't you go where it really needs to be picked on, which is Einstein, uh, spent space bullshit, and then uh, even the Maxwell bullshit of these imaginary fields that you really can't represent as anything other than um, <coughs> uh, energyless energy. You don't have a source of energy in your physics. It's a fundamental problem. No, not a <laughs> you know, and it's not a little problem, it's a big glaring problem, and you don't even touch it. I'm always surprised if people tell me that they never understood physics, because I would say that physics is the only thing you can really understand. 
So that's another bizarre statement. Um, you can't understand it. How do you understand a virtual photon? How do you understand a bent geodesic? There's no understanding. Oh, what? Rails. There's rails, and the rails are converging, and the thing follows the rails or something. What are you talking about? The mechanism is is incomprehensible. You can't comprehend it. You can't make yourself understand it if you're rational, in my opinion. There's no way to reason any explanation for it. Well, no, the Earth is is being moved on some kind of mathematical geodesic. <clears throat> what are you talking about? It's the rest of the world that doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, that doesn't make sense because it's invented by a moron. The universe is really stupid. It has very few brain cells to start. Um, so that's easy to understand why it's broken. But there's no excuse for physics to be this fucking silly. And you're just defending the silly by saying this mathematical crap. All right, this that you can mathematically uh, understand conceptually. That you can math, you you know, like even the process of evolution, you could say, you say yeah, it's mathematical in a sense, but it, no, it's all conceptual. You have to conceptually understand. There's these components, the gen genes. There's chemicals that read the genetic code um, and end up creating more chemicals by causing a reaction, and that the, all these chain reactions are involved, and they're all mechanical, but. You don't understand that mathematically. You have to understand that visually, conceptually. So that's it for today. See you next week. Oh. Sorry, didn't like it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, I didn't like it. I am subscribed. And, you know, hopefully you won't make too many videos like this because I don't like this at all. <laughs> yeah. So she makes uh, music videos, which are actually quite interesting so maybe we'll just go look at a music video um let's see most popular dark energy uh, music videos there they are yeah so let's go look at some of those and uh, let's find one we like uh, let's see a million miles oh, that was all right uh i thought this uh Let's see, where's the Ave Maria one? I thought that was rather clever. Do, 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 do. Oh, private videos. Mm, mm, yeah, I need some of that. Anyway, uh, I can't forget. Uh, interesting. Fucking with my brain. I don't remember that one. So let's play that one. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of rappy. Uh, yeah, your refrigerator's broken. Alright, let's get to it. <laughs> get to it. There we go. That's better. That's it. No words yet. There we go. really my uh, whatever okay enough of that we don't want to steal copyrighted stuff and all that kind of crap <laughs> you'll end up in a copyright violation oh youtube is so pathetic anyway uh the world is pathetic so anyway just throw it in uh probably a mistake because yes it'll probably be recognized as some kind of something or other so anyway um yeah so smart and creative but full of a little bit of shit <laughs> yeah sorry as far as i'm you know sorry just ugh, physics is so broken and yeah this pretending it's not oh it's just silly anyway i think that's all there is so nothing in the subscriptions is just uh, impossible the snow bike is going crazy uh, you know, these people who invent stuff and it's all 
junk. <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, you know, and the freaking thunderbolts. I mean, just God, 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 God done it. Bullshit. So anyway, like fractal bullshit. Fractal's done it. Bullshit. Just everywhere you look. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Anyway. So that's it. Until next time and such. So forth and whatnot.